In this activity, we're going to learn how to use the JavaScript eval function and to ha handle exceptions in JavaScript. So to begin with, we have this page and we want to be able to enter uh, the number of inches here and report out how many meters that is. So we're going to do a simple conversion. So first we want to be able to uh, you attach a listener to this button and we want to do that on load. So we're going to start in our JavaScript file. So go ahead and get in your JavaScript file and let's go ahead and add on an add event listener. And we want to add it when the, on the event load. And when it loads, um, here I'm going to use an anonymous function. So I'm just going to type the function right in line without a name. So it's going to be the anonymous function. And inside here, I'm going to write everything that I want to happen when this page loads. All right. So when it loads, I want to connect to that but um, to that button and so if we go down here we see that there's the button has ID convert button so we're going to go ahead and grab that dot get element by ID remember you have to get all those capitalization capitalizations just right and I want that convert button is the element that I want and once I get that I'm going to add an event listener and this one I'm going to use a, a named event listener. So I'm going to do it. The event is click. So I put the event and then next I put the function. And since I'm using a named function, then I just use the name of the function, which is convert. And notice that in this case, this is unusual, that I don't use any parentheses there. And then I'm going to come down after uh, this statement and I'm going to go ahead and create that function um, convert. All right, so we're making progress here. We're getting things set up to, for that button to be clicked. All right, when it's clicked, uh, we want to gather the number of inches that they have entered, that the user has entered. And so I'm going to do that by get element by ID. And in this case, I'm going to use that text box. So let's go up and find out what that text box has. ID equal to inch text. So inch text. And what I'm going to grab is the value that's there. All right, and I'm going to store it in this variable inches. And then I'm going to do the conversion. I'm going to say meters is equal to, and it's inches times, and I just looked this formula up on the internet, so you can just do that as well, but it's times 0 0.0254. Once I do that, then I want to capture the heading 3 that's right by it, where I'm going to write that message, and that ID is equal to message. So I'm going to go get that. Notice that all of this is really standard stuff that we've done where we can go and get the element that we need and <clears throat> then we can get the different things for it like we can get the value, we can add an event lister, listener, um, here we're going to change the inner HTML so what's between the opening and closing and I want to say inches, that's the variable and then I want to say, I want to type the, so if they entered three, it would say three inches, because I'm going to write the inches in the string, equals, and now I'm going to say how many meters, which is a variable. And then I'm going to type in the word meters. All right. Let's see how we're doing here. Okay, we've got all of that done. Hopefully yours looks that way. If not, pause and try again, or keep going till you get it done. So notice that we don't see any visible change here. So let's go ahead and try to enter a value. So let's enter 112. Oh, 
and it says 112 inches equals 2.844 meters. So let's clean it up a little. Let's say that we don't want all of these digits. That's just the default amount of precision. So we can go into our formula and right here where we do meters, we can use the two fixed function. Say we only want two digits after. All right. It might be a while since you've used that. It's just the variable dot two fixed and this specifies it doesn't change the value that's stored in meters it just specifies how much of it to be displayed so let's try that again we put in 112 and there we have it rounded to those two digits okay so we've got this happening this is happening pretty well now let's go ahead and see if somebody does let's say that the user enters something like this what happens? Oh, it comes up with this NAN meters. Now you and I might know that that means not a number, but our user doesn't know that. And so we want to be able to handle this a little bit more user friendly. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the eval function that will let us be able to um, specify what we want to write here when we have a problem with this function. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the eval function. And the eval function is a JavaScript function. And what I'm going to do is here's where I get that value. And instead of using it directly, I'm going to use the eval function on whatever is put in that text box. And the eval function will evaluate this for some kind of value. So it wants to know uh, what it can do is it goes gets that value, which is a string, and it converts it to a numeric value. So it will perform some um, whatever it can to evaluate that. So let's go ahead and refresh this and see what we get. If we put 56, it converts it for us. Um, Notice some interesting things. We can do a, a formula here, 56 plus 34, we can go convert. It does, the eval function will evaluate, evaluate that formula. And we can make this very complex. So we can do um, as much as we want here. So, and it will, the eval function evaluates that formula and computes it is 107. And that's what it does here. And it takes that, it evaluates that function and says it's, what was the number? Two, um, 107, stores that 107 in inches, does the calculation to find out how many meters that is, and stores that in meters and reports back out to us. So we see that it works if they enter what we expect. But what about if we go back to this problem where they enter the word inches after it? What happens then? Oh, look, nothing's, nothing seems to be happening. Let's refresh it so we can see without that in there. And when we click on it, it appears that nothing's happening. Let's go ahead and look at our console and notice what we're getting here. It says we're getting an uncaught syntax error. And so our our page quits working. And this is problematic. We don't want to allow our page to quit working. So what this is showing us is that the eval function throws an exception. When it cannot evaluate what is in the parentheses, then it throws an exception. So here we have the opportunity to use a try catch block to tell it what to do when that happens. So we can say, hey, try this. So try the eval function, right? And um, here, here you go. If you try it, so here's where you're going to try. Well, actually, it's just right here. Here's where you try the eval function. If it works, there's no exception thrown in. It just moves down to the next line and does that. Then it moves to the next line and does that, which is just what we want it to do. But if it does this evaluation and it produce, it throws an exception, then we can it will move to the catch block. And so we can say, hey, we want you to catch that error. And here we can say what we want to do. 
And what we want to do is we want to write a message, something different than what is there now. But we're going to still write it to the same location, but we're going to specify something different. We're going to write another message. And notice this is way past my 80 characters, so I'm going to bring this down on the next line and say, OK, could not do conversion. Please enter number or complete formula only. So let's go ahead and see what happens now as we move to this. So we do this. They put in something. Well, let's try something just regular. And it does the convert. Here it can evaluate it. That worked. No exception was thrown. And it does the 1.5 meters. Now let's try it when there's something that they can't figure out. And what does it do? It reports what we did. So it does what we asked it to do in the catch section. So here we have the opportunity to catch that exception and do what it is we want to do with it. All right, that's pretty straightforward, but that's just the beginning of what we need to know about the eval function. There are some tricky parts about the eval function. So this is not it, but notice what happens if I put a, um, a JavaScript command in there. So one of the things the eval function does is it evaluates a formula, a mathematical formula. But the other thing it does is it will execute a statement. So here I've entered a document.write statement. So now when that's evaluated, no exception is thrown, the actual statement is executed. And my page is gone. It did a document.write, which started from the beginning, and that page is, everything's written overwritten by this gotcha that I wrote in that statement. This is the security risk with eval functions. Now, a document di a, um, a document dot write pr uh, problem function call is not too serious, right? Because all it does is write information to the page, right? Just wrote that heading. So that's pretty benign, but there are very hazardous um, JavaScript functions. So if somebody were being malicious, they could enter something in here that could do damage to our program or to the data that we have stored. And so whenever we use the eval function, we want to protect it so that it can't gather information from a user because we don't want to open up the risk that the user can enter anything that they want because it might be malicious. So what we do in this case is on that text box, we're going to call it a read, we're going to add the read only attribute. And you can do the simplified version where you just write read only, and you don't have to give it a value, and that sets it so we can't access it. So as soon as I do that, then notice that I can't, I'm clicking and typing, I can't click and type on there at all. So it's not letting me do anything. It's read only, I have no direct access to that text box. Well, once we do that, we have to give a way for the users to be able to enter values in there. And so what we want to do is we want to absolutely control that. So we're going to create a way for us to add it <clears throat> and for our, so for our program to add it. So go ahead and take the comments off of all of these buttons and we'll create, we'll let these buttons be a way for the user to be able to enter something. So remove those comments and here you have all these buttons that the user can use to enter values in here. First let's go ahead and change the instructions so they won't be entering the number directly. They'll use the buttons below to enter the number of inches. Okay, so that will give them better instructions. But now we need to wire up these buttons so that when you click on them, their value is written in there. Now notice with each button, I've set the value to be exactly the number that is on the button. And I've given them, I've given all the ones that have numbers on it a class digit and all the ones that have operators a class operator. And this gives us a way to access these different buttons. So in the JavaScript, what we want to do is, again, add listeners, right? But now we're going to be gathering a whole bunch at one time. So to do that, I want to say, okay, I want to, I'm going to get this numbers. And now remember, JavaScript is light, loosely typed. So this variable can hold numbers, strings, integers, real numbers. Uh, but it can also hold an array. 
and that's what we're going to use it for here is because we're going to have it be an array of all those elements all right now to do that then we do document dot get now we're we're still going to get element but we're not going to get one element we're going to get more than one elements by class name right because the class name is what I had set the same on all of them and I set it to digit so there's a bunch that are set with class set to digit right and so um, with the class is different than ID ID you want to make sure you only have one element with that um, ID set but with class you can have multiple ones and so that's why I use class instead of ID. All right, so it says go get all of them that have, that's why it has the S, go get all of them that have class set to digit and store them in here. So now all those elements are in there. I need to figure out how many that is so I know how to loop. So I'm going to go size equals and I can simply do numbers.length. So JavaScript uh, keeps track of this value, the length of the array. So I just do the dot length and I get it. And now I'm going to loop through. All right, so I'm going to loop through from i equal to 0 to i less than size and increment i each time. And then I can say, what do I want to do? And what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to go numbers i, right, numbers i, and I'm going to add an event listener. And this allows me to loop through and add an event listener to each of those buttons. And the event I want it to listen for is the click event. And I'm going to have, I'm going to use a named function here as well, and I'm going to call it build formula. Okay, so you do this along with me. Go ahead and add this um, event listener and this loop that'll go through and add it to every one of those buttons and then we'll come down here and write another function and we'll call it build formula and what we want this function to do is we want to to go get that text box right get element by ID and here is our inches text inch text that's our text box and we want to change the value of it okay and that's how we change what's inside a text box is with dot value um, inner.html will not work on a text box and what we want to do is we say whatever's in there add to it so I'm using the plus equals so take whatever's in there and add to it and what do I want to add I want to add this dot value now that this is going to remember we're looping through this number array so it's going to be the current button that we're on so we're going to loop through and each button we're going to add the value right we're going to add this listener so that whenever it's clicked, right, it will add that up there. So let's go ahead and see how this looks. So it loops through and it says that every time I click on a button, it will add, right, it takes whatever's in the text box and it adds to it whatever I click. And there is how I can do that. Now, and then I can click convert because that value is in there and it'll convert. So here I have a way to allow the users to enter numbers even though they can't directly type. So I've done two things. I've given them a way to add numbers and I've protected it. So only things that can be entered in there are the things that I've specified in my code, right? I've specified the values. All that can be entered are those values that I've specified. So I've protected it in that way. Uh, <clears throat> now let's go ahead and say we want to start over so we've got to be able to get rid of it let's go ahead and wire up this clear button to be able to clear that text box so again in our JavaScript up here in in our load function right I'm going to get that clear button document dot get element by ID and let's go see what is the ID of that clear button? There it is. The ID is clear button, BTN. 
So I'm going to put that and what I want to do is I want to add an event listener to that button and the event I want it to listen for is the click event and this time I'm going to use an anonymous function. Okay, notice how I'm going kind of back and forth and using both anonymous functions and named functions. I want you to be fluent in being able to do either one of these. So here I'm going to do an anonymous function. So I type function and I write that function right here. So this is the whole function right there. And what I want to have do is when this happens, I want to go get that, that text box, right? Add event not add event listener, I'm sorry, I want to go get that um, get element by ID and I want to get that inches text, all right, that text box and I want to change its value to the empty string. All right, that's what clear means, it would, I'm resetting it, whatever used to be in there, now notice I didn't use the plus equals, so I just said set it to the empty string. Let's go ahead and refresh that and see how this works. So we enter several numbers and we push clear and it resets to the empty string. And there we can go ahead and put numbers and convert. We can clear and start another number, convert, and now we can do one after another because we have that ability to clear. All right, let's go ahead and use the ability to be able to use formulas, right? I showed you how you could do a number plus a number, and the eval, eval function will evaluate the formula and produce a single value. So to do that, we want to wire up and put event listeners on all of these operators. And these are going to look very much like we did it with all of the numbers, right? So, but now we're going to get them by the operator. So we're still going to use get elements by class name, right? But we're going to use operator. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see. Let's get a variable to store it, and we're going to get a whole array here. So let's let's call it, I'll call it operators equals, and we're going to go document dot and we're going to get elements by class name and the class name we're looking for is operator okay. so now now that we've got them what do we want to do with them we want to um, loop through them remember there's going to be more than one so now's when we need to loop through them so again, I'm going to use this variable size. I can just reuse the one we already have because I, I use it up here and I can reuse it again. Uh, and this one will be operators.length. And now I can build a for loop that will go through this, right? And I just do var i equals zero as long as i is less than size i++. plus plus. So there's my for loop and now what do I want to do? Here's where I'm going to add that event listener. So I'm going to go th the, this particular element which is operators i dot I'm going to add an event listener and this time I'm going to use up here when I did when I went through this loop I I did a named formula. Now I'm going to go through a for loop and I'm going to use an anonymous function. First I have to say what event I'm looking for. Again I'm still looking for the click event and here's where and then I put a comma. The second parameter is the function and here I'm going to put that anonymous function. Okay so what do I want it to do here? I want to go get that text value, right? I want to go get the the element where ID is set to inch text and I want to get whatever's in there and I'm going to add to it so I'm using the plus equal I'm going to add a space so we have a space around the operators plus the this dot value so that's whatever text bot at whatever button they clicked right because each of those operator buttons have a value plus minus multiplication and division. Now notice one thing about the multiplication. Uh, 
I want, I'm displaying it as an X, but when it's evaluated, I want it to be evaluated with a multiplication, because in JavaScript, that's what multiplication is. So the user is seeing an X, which is what the user expects for multiplication, but the value that will be received and stored in the text box is that asterisk, plus this value, plus another space. All right, so save that. Let's go see how that works. Okay, so now we can add a 12 and a plus. See how it put that space plus, and we can put a 34 and a times, and it puts that times it expects, and a three and a divide by and a two. So we can make complete formulas here. And it, the eval function, Notice what the eval function will do. It gets this formula, it evaluates it down and says it, that equals 63 and stores the 63 in inches, does the conversion, and then writes out the number of inches and what it is converted to in meters. Now let's see what happens if the user enters uh, incorrectly. So if they just do this much of the formula and they do convert, what happens? It tries to evaluate that. It can't evaluate it, so it throws the exception. Our catch catches it and writes out the same message that we want whenever there's an error. So now we really have it doing what we want it to do. And it catches errors. It allows users to input, but only the things we want them to do. The last thing we're going to do in this activity is to change the style using JavaScript. So. Um, this will prepare you for the homework that you need to do, and it lets you see how you can manipulate style uh, with JavaScript. This time I want to get all the buttons. Remember one time I got the ones that had class set to digit, and here the one that class set to operator, and here the one that was the clear button, but what I really, well, we'd end the convert button, but I want to get all the buttons. So to do this, I'm going to um, create a variable that will hold all the buttons. So this, again, this will be array, an array, and I'm going to do document.get and elements. It's going to be a plural by tag name. And the tag name is button. All right, so that's going to go get everyone that has the HTML um, button element, and it's going to store that in buttons. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to create. I'm going to. I can still use that same size variable again because I don't need it. I've used it already, and I can use it again, reuse it, right? And I'm going to go through. I'm going to figure out buttons dot length. And I'm going to create a for loop that will loop through that so it looks just like this, right? So for i equals 0, i less than size, i plus plus. And what I want to do with this is I want to say this button, and the, as I loop through, it's going to be the button with the i, and it'll loop through and get each one. I'm going to add an event listener. But this time, the event that I want it to listen to is the focus event. So this is when. Uh, that button becomes into focus, and that's the event I want it to, to respond to. And here I'm going to use an anonymous function again. And what I want it to do is I want it to change, I want it of this element, so I'm going to say this dot, and here's how I change the style, style dot border, and we've done this before, you've seen it before in previous um, videos border and what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the border and so I want it to be four pixels and I want the color to be and this is one of the ones from above and I want it to be solid okay and that's what I want it to be on focus so let's go see how that works so now when I click on a button, there I get that border because it was on focus. Oh, now watch what happens. Notice that it's not changing when I leave focus. So what I really want to do is I want it to go back to its original setting when it's no longer in focus. So to do this, I need to add an event listener on blur. 
Now I can use the same buttons, right? I want this to be added to every button, so I'm actually going to do this in exactly the same for loop. And so I can loop through here and I can also add another event listener to the same button, right? Loop through them each one at a time. But this time I want it to listen for the blur event. And that's when it focus is removed. So now I'm going to add a function. And this one I want also to set the style. So I'm going to do this dot style dot border and I'm going to return it to what it was originally which was four pixels and the color is C to C 60 F and the type is inset rather than solid okay so now I've set both a, an event listener on the event focus and an event listener on the event blur. I refresh it and there on focus we get that new border. When I leave focus it returns to the original border. So now when you focus you get that solid blue. When you unfocus it goes back to the original. Okay, And that's how you set style. Let's go ahead and change the uh, set a style on hover. So I'm notice how I'm adding multiple event listeners. So I've got on this button, I've got an event, every one of the buttons, right? Because it's got all of them. Uh, a listener that responds to the focus event and a listener that responds to the blur event. And also then I have on the click event for the operators and the click event for the clear button and the click event for the digit buttons and for the convert buttons, they all have multiple event listeners added and that's certainly doable. Again I'm going to say add it to all the buttons so I'm going to use exactly this same for loop and add an event listener but this time the event that I want it to listen for is the mouse over event and that's when the mouse moves over the element and I'm going to add a function and here then I want to change this dot style dot and now I'm going to use the background color and I'm going to set it equal to pound a89 bbd and you'll find these values at the very top of the style sheet that's included in the activity and let's see what we've got happening here when we change it on mouse over. So now when I mouse over it changes. Now I have the same problem I had with focus is that it doesn't change back when you move it out. So I want to do this again. I'm just going to copy the whole thing but now I want to do it when mouse out and when that happens I want to return it to the original background color D zero C eight D E save and refresh. Now when I mouse over it changes. When I mouse out it changes back to the original. So there we have it. That when we click on it, right, it goes into focus and it gets that new border. And there we have the option and our convert still works. There you go. Lots of things that you can do with JavaScript.